One of the main goals of the commercial space industry is to reduce the cost of launching payloads into orbit. This is why reusable booster rockets are such a big deal. They can save millions of dollars per launch and make space more accessible. But no other company has been a more noteworthy pioneer of the technology than the Elon Musk-led space exploration company SpaceX. So let's explore how SpaceX has led the charge in the reusable rocket movement in today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX has pioneered rocket recovery technology, allowing the firm to reuse one rocket for multiple launches. SpaceX, the company leading the charge in trying to bring launch costs down, doesn't just recover booster rockets, however, it also recovers the rocket fairings that hold the payload during launch. SpaceX's original plan was to capture the fairings as they fell back to Earth using specially equipped ships with nets to catch them before they landed in the ocean. Musk even challenged his employees to go catch the fairings. You have six million bucks falling from the sky, Musk famously said. Now, however, the company has transitioned to simply fishing fairings out of the ocean after they splash down. But why? Kiko Donchev, vice president of launch at SpaceX, just revealed the real reason why SpaceX gave up on catching falling fairings. But we'll get to that in a moment. First, we have to review everything that leads up to the big reveal now, don't we? Time and time again, they completely reuse the first stage of the Falcon 9 rocket, with nine engines and the bulk of the mass, accounting for about half of the cost of manufacturing a rocket, so that represents a considerable saving in time and money for SpaceX. However, as with most other boosters, there are two other main components of the Falcon 9 rocket. There is, of course, the second stage, which boosts a payload into orbit, and for most missions, a payload fairing, otherwise known as rocket fairings, these are protective shields that guard the payload as the rocket blasts it through the atmosphere. Before, once the Falcon 9 breached the atmosphere, the shields would split down the middle, revealing the payload, and fall back down into Earth's atmosphere where they would either burn up or come crashing down near the launch site. SpaceX's plan to recover fairings has relied on putting parachutes inside them to slow their descent, but this has proven tricky. It turns out, if you pop the parachute on the fairing, you've got this giant, awkward, thing, Musk said at the Falcon Heavy press conference, acknowledging this challenge was low priority compared with mastering other parts of rocket reusability. It tends to interfere with the airflow on the parachute and gets all twisty. These modified fairings, on the other hand, deploy parachutes to slow their descent and use thrusters to guide themselves towards a recovery boat that Musk named Mr. Steven. The boat was retrofitted with four metal arms and a net to act as a giant catcher's mitt to retrieve the fairings. The economic motivation for attempting a fairing capture is simple. Salt water is corrosive, so if a fairing lands in the ocean, it must be refurbished at a cost. Catching it before it hits the water would eliminate the need to refurbish it, thereby lowering the cost of reusing the fairing. To attempt this capture, SpaceX commissioned two ships, named with their usual whimsical style, Miss Tree and Miss Chief. The two ships were fitted with custom nets and advanced computer-controlled systems and sent out into the ocean to attempt to catch the fairings from SpaceX launches as they fell back to Earth. SpaceX's engineering team developed a complex recovery process, and the company caught its first fairing in January of 2020. It worked. We did it, right? You basically have this really awesome algorithm, this like crazy automation. The fairing would fly, it had a parafoil, and it would steer itself, and then the boat would have this automated control that would basically turn and follow, and the two would close, and that's how you'd, how you'd capture them. Having spent many months honing its skills and slowly getting better at catching the nose cone halves so they could later be reused, in the end, SpaceX clearly gave up on that front. The problem is they were only successful less than 20% of the time. SpaceX attempted 50 fairing catches and only succeeded in 9 of them. In some instances, the ships actually did catch the fairing, but then the net ripped or the fairing was blown out of the net by the parasols it was still attached to. Additionally, the ships themselves were damaged repeatedly, with one losing some of its attached arms in a storm. The reality is, most of the time, it's a choppy, hot mess with you know, seven to nine foot waves with super short period and a ton of wind. And so even though we caught it once, our actual success rate from being fairings home was quite low. It was under 50%, 40%, and our ability to get fairings ready to fly again was choking our launch rate. Yep. 
SpaceX is big on analytics. You have to be when you're building rockets from scratch. And that's what led the company to attempt to catch the fairings in the first place. The idea being that catching them would save a lot of money since they could be reused rapidly and wouldn't risk being damaged by the salty ocean water. It's likely that the company crunched the numbers and determined that the cost of the ships and the operations to catch the fairings didn't provide cost savings over just picking them up from the ocean and doing a bit more work to refurbish them. But the company then had a great idea. They started doing the next best thing, which is fishing the fairing out of the water directly. Oops, sorry, I mean directly. You happy now? Economically, it must make more sense to simply refurbish the fittings rather than continuing to attempt to catch them. Don Shiv spoke about the algorithm that SpaceX uses when it designs new technology to solve problems. Essentially, it provides a roadmap for innovating. When you're fundamentally innovating a new technology, you're wrong, he said. It's just a question of how wrong, because your ability to learn is changing constantly. So where you start is certainly not where you're going to end up. As Elon Musk also said before, his companies, SpaceX and Tesla, follow an algorithm to make things much faster and more efficient. First, make the requirements less dumb. Requirements are always bad. Check if requirements are needed and understand why they are needed. Second, delete the part or steps whenever possible. Third, optimize. Fourth, accelerate. And the last thing, automate. In the case of the fairing, the first four steps of the process were used to eventually make recovering rocket fairings 99% successful. They tried to catch the $6 million fairing at first because they assumed they were too delicate to go into seawater. The catching of the fairings was less than 50% successful. They found out they float well, and by moving delicate parts higher up, they could just let them land in the water. Reusability has made SpaceX increase launches from less than once per month to nearly once every three days. So what we found out was fairings actually float pretty darn well. Sailboats effectively composite. It's really just a big boat. Well, do we really need to catch them? We challenge that requirement. If we just move some of the parts to the, the higher part of the fairing, even if a little water did get in, it's going to survive and it's ultimately going to make it much easier. SpaceX has then sold off Mystery and Mischief and purchased a much larger fairing recovery vessel called the Shelia Bodellin. Hey, am I pronouncing that wrong? Let me know in the comments down below. That might be because it is a temporary arrangement as the Shelia Bodellin was originally designed for undersea exploration and much of the ship's space is taken up with an autonomous underwater vehicle. At 250 50 feet long and in a striking pink and blue color scheme, the ship is certainly as noticeable as you would want a SpaceX recovery ship to be. They have specialized nets installed that would enable what SpaceX is calling wet recovery, which allows them to scoop fairings out of the sea rather than craning them out. SpaceX's innovative approach reflects their overall algorithm for problem solving, which involves challenging existing requirements and continuously optimizing, accelerating, and automating the recovery process. Watching SpaceX attempt to catch the components was a lot of fun. And while it was definitely a good idea, it just didn't pan out. SpaceX will now still be reusing its nose cones, but they'll just be a little bit wetter when they make it to port. Well, that's it, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.